start with. I'm the first uh, speaker for the pro side in the argument that China's rise is beneficial to U.S. interests. So, pro China, China rise. Transition to new government went smooth. You underestimate Chinese political resilience. It will continue to rise, not fade. China's one-party political system will be con consolidating and modeled around the world. Lee venture capitalists and political scientists in Shanghai 13. In November 2012, the Chinese Communist Party held its 18th National Congress, setting a transfer of power to a new generation of leaders. Xi Jinping took over as general secretary, and the turnover was smooth and by confidently rising superpowers. Economics quoted a named scholars at a recent conference saying that China is, quote, unstable at the grassroots, dejected at the middle strata, and out of control at the top, unquote. To be sure, months before the handover, the scandal surrounding Bo Xi Lai, the former party boss of Chongqing, Chongqing had shattered China's long-held state of unity. To make matters worse, the Chinese economy should sustain double-digit GDP growth for two decades slowed. Chinese econom Ch China's economic model of rapid industrialization, labor and system of manufacturing, investments in infrastructure, um, large-scale government investments in infrastructure and growth, export growth seem to have nearly run its course. There's no doubt that daunting challenges await you see, but those who suggest that China will not be able to deal with them fundamentally misread China's politics and the resilience of its governing institutions. Beijing will be able to meet its country's ills thanks to China's adaptability, system of meritocracy, and legitimacy of the Chinese people. In the next decade, China will continue to rise, not fade. China's rising for multiple reasons. Kenny, senior fellow at Center for Global De Development 11. But the 21st century is not the 19th. Chinese, China's place in the world and the nature of its power are quite different. China's growing prominence extends beyond simple measurements of output. While the United States and the European Union each had shares of world trade for more than four times larger than China's, as recently as 2000 by 2010, their shares were all within a percentage point of each other. China had accounted for only 4% of the world net capital exports. By 2010, it had climbed up to 18%. When it comes to the technological and educational underpinnings of modern growth, while the United States is still far ahead, China is fast gaining. The World Intellectual Property Organization reports that U.S. filings under the Patent Cooperation Treaty dropped from 51,000 to 45,000 between 2006 and 2010. Over the same period, China's international... Payment fillings tripled from under 4,000 to over 12,000. According to Subramanian, in 2006, China was producing twice as many science and engineering graduates as the United States. And by one minute left. 2008, the United States led in peer reviewed scientific artificial yeah, article publications has shrunk by more than half the six fold advantage it enjoyed in 2002. By 230, by 2030, China is likely to account for about a quarter of the world's GDP compared to America. China's share of global trade in the GDP will look similar to those of the United States in 1950, and its net capital exports share similar to America's in 1970. China is not ris rising, it has risen. Zhu Dury Asian Studies at Buffalo University 11. By the end of the first decade of the 21st century, the People's Republic of China has become a major player in the international political economy. China is not a rising power anymore. It has risen. China continues to impress the world with its continuous achievements, and these have added much confidence to policymakers in Beijing. China's foreign policy will have significant impacts on international politics, economy, econ economics, and security in the decades ahead. China's government is. Time.